Talking to Charlton manager Carl Robinson ahead of Saturday's home game against Peterborough. Carl, you had to contend with a squad decimated by injuries when it came to selecting Tuesday's side for the FA Cup replay with NK Dons. Has the situation eased and have your selections improved ahead of the Peterborough game? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, listen, since before I came, there's obviously injuries starting to, to build up and and obviously they've, they've sort of continued slightly and, and the freak ones Jason's one obviously we've released today how bad that is I think 12 to 15 weeks is going to be the, the time span for the, for the player to be out which is a big disappointment to us uh, Lee Novak's having a scan on his knee today uh, see what he is obviously Chris Sully uh, is, is still in the recovery mode and Ricky Holmes had a slight setback as well so when you look when you look at these four players the the, the some of our better players if, if if you're being honest, some of the players who you would see in the summer has been quite poignant in the success of the football club. But it is what it is, and uh, I think you're seeing how I want to deal with things. I don't think I did too much moaning. And we got on with our job, we uh, we integrated some of the young players, um, and it was a tremendous learning even for me. And uh, just looking at the stats before, I don't think anybody's gone there to, and done what we did. And people say, You lost, but we lost the next to time, we were the better team. And we keep performing, and we keep being the better team, and we keep staying on the front foot win more games than we lose and once our players start coming back to fitness then we will be looking to move forward so it'll be a difficult it's a, I always knew what coming in there was no the transparency was always there it's going to be difficult for the first four weeks with the injuries that we had and everything else and trying to change things slightly I think you know the scenes are different in mentality in the place I think everyone's seen that uh, not because anything was right wrong or different before just because it's a different person and we'll uh, we, we'll soldier on to the next one who is available to you for the Peterborough game? Who wasn't available to you on Tuesday? And uh, touching on Jason Pierce, he's obviously a, now a long-term injury. Yeah, he is long-term injury, and, and it's, it's a difficult one for him and, and me as the manager. Um, and equally for the fans who support him every week. So, uh, but we'll have Freddie back. His hamstrings looks like he's he ran yesterday. Uh, Crofty's back. Uh, Josh will be back. And hopefully, he's had a. It's now he's fully rested. Uh, Declan Wood could be back so there's one or two bits of positive news in there uh, the, 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 maybe the most positive one would, be, would have been Grant McCann when we went to extra time on Tuesday Six place Peterborough hit five against Chesterfield a week ago and have won four times away from home they're going pretty well at the moment yeah they are they uh, I played against them twice yeah they, they lost one and won one uh, one at their place and, and got beat to Stephen and Kay so I know I know most of them very well. It's uh, I think Grant's done an unbelievable job. He's gone in, he's really settled the ship down, he's really sort of took them forward. The young, the exciting, the forward thinking, and the fantastic on the break. I think that's what I think they're almost set up for that in some ways. They sort of try and get you onto them and all of a sudden when you when you think you're comfortable in possession of the football, they'll hit you and, and you'll find it difficult to cope with the demands of their their speed. So we'll uh, we've looked over one or two games of theirs. We we think we've found one or two elements where we know how strong they really are, um, and we have to make sure we can negate our way around that. Um, but we're at the valley, so we should be taking the game to them. Uh, but in some ways, I think they could. That's what they want. They want you to be expanded. They want you to be getting on them because when you look at the players that they have, they can really hit you on the break. They have one of the best young players in the country, in Lopez. I think he's as good as I've seen for for, for a long, long time. Up until Tuesday night, we we'll see some of our young players, um, but he's a, an exceptional talent, and I'm sure they'll have an awful lot of bids coming in for him in January. Well, I'm just coming on to the transfer market or window opens in two and a half weeks. Who are you expecting to be involved? Oh yeah, oh yeah, um, heavily. Hopefully, um, we have one or two people that we're looking at already. Um, one or two people who we've spoken to clubs and, and made some sort of headway and we're nowhere near doing any deal um, but we're all working around the clock I could say as a, I've been in four or five games in the last few weeks that's not even including our own just trying to find players who we know can fit the system that we want to play um, I think it's important that we have an age element on it and the, the biggest thing is that the brave they have energy a desire and a willingness to want to come play for this club um, I don't care how talented you are if you think you're above your state, if you think you're above us, you're never going to achieve things with us. And uh, that's been the big thing for me is finding players who, when I phone, 
that they get excited when they hear what club is want them. And uh, I said that for a few people, a bit disappointed sometimes at this level when we may go and we ask questions of the opposite of, of some teams that because it's Charlton, the price goes up. It's a bit unfair. Um, and they're, they're things that I'm learning and things that I've not had to deal with before. I was always bringing the price down. Now people expect they can take it up. But what I did see, like I said, on Tuesdays, an awful lot of players at football club who, who have certainly got a tremendous future here. With prices soaring, do you need to be clever, imaginative and creative to fight for the good players at the right price? <laughs> yes, I'm passionate. Um, when I sit down with a player, if I don't believe in the project and if I don't get excited by a project, I can't make them believe in the project. And uh, I always said, I've always said this was always going to be a real difficult month for us. We, we knew that the, the games and everything that was going on, it was hard. But the players have really coped with the demands of, of illnesses, injuries. And when you look at the players that I've had to select from over the last few weeks, it's, it's been when I sat down and spoke to the owners, a lot of the players that I wanted to play have been nowhere near it. So, But the players who've come in have been excellent. And I, and I, I, but still, if I have a demand, if, if I'm putting demand on myself, is to be successful here. So I have to delve into every transfer market if I think it's going to improve us, not just, not just a squad player but a player that really drives us forward. Um, and there's one or two players that I have earmarked already um, and hopefully we can uh, we can push forward. As, and I'm not adverse to bringing in somebody from the continent. I'm actually running some, some data at the moment on players who play abroad. Do they have the same intensity? Do they cover the same distance? Do they cover the right amount of high-intensity sprints? Do they cover all the facets that I believe it takes to play in this country. Um, so I, I'm looking all over, I really am. And uh, the recruitment uh, team are working around the clock. Uh, that's 50% of my job at the moment, 50% is obviously games, but I have to give them all 100%, so I've no time left at all in my life. But I'm really looking forward to the next two and a half weeks and hopefully we can get ourselves down the line with some deals and make this great football club stronger and, and more competitive. Is there a priority in terms of position, defensive, midfield, up front? Um, I think we need wingers. I really do. I think it's a it's a part of the game that I love. Um, call, call me old fashioned in some ways, but there's nothing better than a winger flying down and flying down one side and and dominating a full back. It, it, it creates havoc at this level. We do need to add in midfield, um, but Joe Rebo and Esri showed on 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 Tuesday how good they can be. Um, and I'd like somebody who can play a little bit narrower as well. Uh, so we want to go with a four-two-three-one. I have that flexibility to, to do so. I always like having two left wingers, two right wingers, and two number tens and two strikers. That's always been my thing, especially in my previous club. So it's there's an awful lot of work going on, and uh, I think you can expect the demands that I'm putting on people. Ow.